Hello. Hi, George. This is Ray Carr from the Ray Carr Radio Program. Well, hi. How are you? Good. Our special guest, George Shakaris. George, it's great to have you on the program today, and uh, tell us what you've been up to lately. Oh, Okay, what have I been up to? Well, lots of different things. Um, what have I been up to? What a good question. <laughs> Most of the main thing that I've been up to uh, in the last few years is uh, uh, my line of uh, sterling silver jewelry, which I've, I'm selling in Japan, or here in LA, and on my website, and so on. So that's been taking up most of my most of my time. But uh, I've been uh, to New York for MoMA. They screened uh, a movie that I've been in. Uh, things like that. Just wonderful screenings, uh, Q and As. Uh, there's always so much going on in this town that you you know you're never looking for, for something to do. So uh, pretty much busy uh, on a kind of steady basis. That's that's great news. Uh, George, you're also an Academy Award and Golden Globe winner. Tell me about those things. Oh, well, hey, that was that was uh, obviously a, a great, great and surprising time and thing to, that happened. Uh, Rita Moreno and I, I attended the uh, the uh, Academy Awards uh, the show uh, together, and we both got very lucky that night. It was a fantastic evening for both of us because we're such good friends, and we both got lucky, so it was a really perfect perfect evening um and uh it's interesting because at the time well i don't know how interesting it is but at the time you're just sort of on cloud nine and you you know you, it's hard to take anything in but with time you know like now you can look back and you can appreciate uh, what what actually happened so much more uh, than you you kind of really did at the time um and the golden globe you know the hollywood foreign press association uh both of those are, are such Beautiful awards to have, and and uh, and uh, I'm I'm really proud uh, to have both of them. It's, uh, and I'm so proud that I got to, to go with my friend Rita. We had a fantastic evening together. How do you think West Side Story, um, your role in that movie? How do you think that prepared you for other things in your career? Um. Well, you know, I was so I was so green <laughs> when I did West Side Story. Not not I wasn't green uh, with with the show itself because I played Riff in the London company of West Side for a year and a half before the movie. So I was so familiar with that show and that material that I was you know really primed and ready to do anything related to West Side Story. Um, but um, but I I wasn't a. a how can I say? I, I I wasn't at that time of a mind where uh, you would think, well, okay, I've done this now, I've got to make this kind of move and 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 have a, some kind of strategy. I was I, before that, I had been a chorus dancer in in some of those great Hollywood movie musicals. So to us, we loved what we were doing. And the next, you know, when one job was over, your next thought was. I wonder what my next job is going to be. There was never a, a plan, so to speak. So, uh, but in a way, of course, it did prepare me. But in another way, I wasn't prepared because it was such a, a new experience for me. Because after West Side Story, I, I, I went on. I, mean, I had a, a picture a picture deal with a Irish company who produced it. So after West Side Story, I didn't go back to being a chorus dancer or anything. I went back to... Yeah, I went back. I went. I went up to. I'll say to course starring in, in movies with uh, Yul Brynner, uh, Richard Widmark, uh, uh, Gosh, lots of one of Catherine Deneuve, uh, just a lot of uh, Claudia Cardinale, and, and that was. Um, I, uh, so I, I was. I wasn't prepared. I was prepared for the work. I just wasn't. Didn't understand the way I might have benefited from. Um, uh, knowing what was happening and, and having a plan, as it were, but I still had that uh, mentality of a chorus dancer, just thinking, "What is my next job going to be?" So I didn't um, uh, strategize, so, so to speak. But uh, but I'm not sorry about any of that. But uh, West Side Story prepared me for just about anything, really. Uh, what I wasn't totally prepared for was starring, you know, above the title with some of those. Great, great stars. I, mean, I, I was such a newcomer, you know. Oh, I mean, I mean, to work with some of the people like Natalie Wood and uh, everybody else, and it, it had to be incredible. Oh, it, it, well, it, it was. It, it absolutely was incredible. And and one of the beauties of uh, of that is is not only getting to meet them, getting to know them, and 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 connecting with so many different wonderful, wonderful people on both sides of the ocean, you know. Because I did a lot of work in Europe as well. Um, and uh, uh, it, it was 
uh, it was a great experience. It remains a, a great experience because all of that still goes on. Uh, yeah, my, my first movie after West Side was uh, with uh, Richard Widmark and Yul Brynner. Uh, we filmed it in Japan. And, um, hey, you know, it, talk about people who knew what they were doing. Well, uh, Yul Brynner was one of the greatest actors of our time. Absolutely, yeah. He was. He was. He was I learned so much from him. He was such a nice guy. He was a great photographer. He loved taking pictures when he wasn't uh, actually shooting, and uh, and and he and Richard were so different in personality and, and the way they they uh, worked. And I mean that with all due respect. But it was really interesting to work uh, with two people who were so different and yet so fantastic. Uh, uh, at what they did, you know, both wonderful performers and actors, and they knew their craft inside out. George, what happened after that, though? I mean, how did your career go from that point to where we're at today? Uh, to to what? Sorry. No. Um, how, how did your explain your your movie roles and things? How they went from that point after West Side Story to where we're at today? Oh well, um, let's see. Uh, uh, in the sixties. Uh, I, I, I was, I was making movies, just only, only movies. Jerry Robbins did ask me to be in Fiddler on the Roof, but I wasn't able to do it because of uh, movie commitments. Um, and, uh, uh, to, to sort of fast forward, the, 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 I think one of the last movies I did in the 60s, uh, which is a movie I really enjoyed doing, although it's considered a kind of camp sort of cult film now, was, uh, a, a movie with Lana Turner called The Big Cube. And uh, she was great. Loved working with her. And I, I really loved working on that film, too. But it wasn't, as material goes, it wasn't on a par with it. In fact, it was very far from something like West Side Story. But then again, everything else was. Uh, nothing, 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 for I think, for anybody involved in any film after West Side Story. Those of us who were involved in it, including Bob Wise and Jerry Robbins and uh, the, the Mirrors Company as well, nothing anybody did before or after could equal that experience because it was such a, such a rare, rare, um, turned out, you know, classical piece. But... Um, for me, I mean, that's a lot of years to fill in up to now, but um, what I did was uh, I was not having a great time because, again, part of this, a good part of this came from my naivete in terms of a career and how to, how to form a career and, uh, and, and, and make choices. I didn't know that I could make choices, so, but uh, what I eventually did was I actually did make a choice, and that was to go back to doing some theater work, which I, I, I've always loved theater. I, I love film, too. But I was, so after uh, starting in 1970, 74, so, uh, in there, I, I, I was doing theater, I did lots of television. I was uh, working uh, overseas as well, um, in Japan, uh, France, and and a lot of work in London. Um, I, I did theatre work. I did a play uh, in London called *The Passion of Dracula*. I, it, it's it's hard to fill it all in 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 a short time, but I I kept very busy. Um, uh, and working and also uh, uh, theater is, 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 is the most amazing learning experience for anybody who wants to act in any media, whether it's film or television, whatever. Uh, you, you learn so much working in the theater with a live audience and night after night how, how things change and how you can play with things. Absolutely. And, and anyway, again, it's just... Yeah, and and, uh -huh. and I did make uh, when I was doing *Passion of Dracula*. The producers of of that play were doing a, a, a small English movie called what was it called? Um, Why not stay for breakfast? And uh, they wanted me to do that, and I, I did. So while I was working on the play, I I, I worked on that film during the day, uh, just a three week shoot. But I'll tell you what, doing a play at night. And, and working all day in a movie studio is really hard work. I got really tired, but it was great. Um, and uh, again, I've, I've done personal appearance tours in Australia. I've done a number of them in Japan. Uh, I did a mini series with Rosemary House for the uh, BBC. I did a mini series for Japanese television uh, for, for NHK. Um, I, I've, I've, I, I've done so much. Uh, it seems like you've done uh, a lot. And the question I have, George, in, yeah. is, is what role, since you've done so much, what role do you want to play that you haven't played yet? 
Wow, what a good question. Mm. You know, I've been so involved in this jewelry thing. I, re I really have taken a left or a right turn or a wrong turn. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's, uh, I, I, in the last easily 10 years, once I made the decision to go with the jewelry and, and it, we started just as a hobby, but became more, uh, my efforts have gone, uh, in, in that direction. So I, I, I sort of veered away from, uh, being a, a performer, uh, and I stopped calling an agent for asking, you know, what's going on. I just totally got away from that. But, um, recently I began to sort of think, realize that I kind of miss you know the the performing thing and uh one of the things that i uh, uh, and it's not a role but one of the things that i uh, people keep telling me george why aren't you on dancing with the stars you know things like that um and uh so that's something uh we're working on not this season but for next um and in terms of a role um one of the things I, uh, there's a beautiful play uh, called Inherit the Wind. It was a movie with Stanley, that Stanley Kramer produced with uh, Spencer Tracy. And I thought, I love the, uh, the material so much that I read it thinking it might be a good play to do. But then I realized after reading it, I wouldn't be right for the role. So um, I'm kind of back to uh, uh, looking at things that, that, that could be mounted or uh, I'm not checking in. It's such a different business now from, you know, when I sort of took a, a left or right turn. Um, and I, I'm not really in the game the same way now that I, that I should be or would like to be. But I'm just a long answer and a lousy answer to your question because I'm not actually giving you the name of a, of, 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 of a role or a piece of material, of play, anything that I, I would like to do. But basically, I, I'm just saying that my interests and my thoughts and my feelings are veering back to wanting to get back on on stage i guess and and be a performer right i understand uh george you've met so many people and you've played so many different types of roles and w would you be um would you be up to working maybe a tv series oh yeah i will i'll tell you that uh, absolutely and uh, you know the main the name of the game in this business is exposure People have to see you. If they don't see you, you know, forget it. <laughs> uh, people are aware of what they're seeing now, and uh, and so absolutely, I, I would love to to do a television series or just play a, a, a be a guest star in, in in one of the really good uh, good shows in a in a in a role that that makes sense and is is of quality. At this stage of the game, you know, the most important thing to me is not uh, necessarily a series where you're where you, the whole thing is you and the character, or main characters in whatever that series is, but just one thing, if it's really well written, that's what's fun. If you're, de if you're, if you're working on something where you really love the material, and uh, that's what we really all want. You know, I, um, Elaine Stritch was a really, really wonderful friend of mine. And, oh, you, uh, you knew Elaine Stritch? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes, Elaine. She was, um, and uh, one of the beautiful things about Elaine was uh, the, 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 the roles that she played. It's a 3D rock and, and, and uh, a monster in law with, with uh, uh, Jennifer Lopez and, and uh, uh, Jane Fonda. I mean, she had, they were not huge roles, but she was so strong and the material was so good that, she, that they. It, it was, I'm sure she loved doing it. My point is, it's, it, the, the thing that really, the most important thing is good material, and that's, that's the hardest thing to find. Yeah, oh, I mean, good material is di very difficult to find. But you seem to find a lot of solace in doing the jewelry uh, aspect of your career, which is the newer part of your career. H how, how do you find happiness in this? And, and, and tell me more about it. About the jewelry? Yes. Yes, uh, yeah. Well, you know, um, uh, I started really accidentally. Um, uh, I was, I just had just finished doing a play in London. Uh, this is about 15 years ago or 14 years ago. And I had a little dog, a little Italian greyhound. His name was, uh, Sammy. I loved my little guy. He was, in fact, the kids in the neighborhood called him Bambi when I take, cause he looked like a little deer. Um, and when I came back from doing that play, I was doing uh, M. Butterfly uh, in, in London. 
Uh, and when I came back, I looked at and I, all my travels and different work, and you know, wherever I was, were always took me away for you know, a good amount of time, like nine, ten months uh, out of a year. Or when I came back, I looked at Sammy, and I thought, you know, nine or ten months is a long time out of his life. So that's when I just, uh, I, I just decided to take a sabbatical, so to speak, and just stay home and be with this amazing little little guy because uh, I loved him so much. And that's exactly what I did. I, I just I didn't call anybody except friends, of course. And, but I stopped working. I just brought up just so I could be with this. And I'm a, I'm, I'm a real animal person, you know. So, um, and uh, that's what I, and then uh, accidentally I, I learned about uh, silver smithing classes and jewelry classes. Classes at Barnesville University here in uh, in Los Angeles, and I started taking classes there, and uh, uh, just fell in love. It took a little while. Fell in love with the the craft of of making uh, making something out of well, as it turns out, ju- jewelry. Um, and uh, with time, without trying to, I. I, I developed what I guess people would call a collection because with time I had made, made like 20 or 30 different pieces just for myself uh, for no other reason. And then uh, I coincidentally met um, a, 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 a jewelry distributor from, uh, from Japan, from Tokyo, who saw my stuff and uh, liked it and placed a really big order. <laughs> so, so that's when I was sort of off and running uh, a, a professional, say, and in a more serious way, with with the jewelry experience, uh, and it's just kept kept going. And I still have my uh, Japanese distributor, and I, I, you know, the website, a couple of really wonderful places here in the town. And we're always on the look uh, on on the uh, looking for, you know, the shopping channels and things like that to try and take it further. That's that's always been ongoing. But uh, the main thing is now our uh, our, our, our Japan, uh, here in Los Angeles, and my website. But but it, it uh, I love I love it. The, the, one of the beautiful things about about uh, I guess doing anything that is quote unquote artistic. The beautiful thing about about jewelry is that you can you can work on something, and when it's finished, you can actually hold it in your hand and look at it and think, oh my God, just. That's nice, or, or I wish I'd done it a little differently, or something. But the product is is a physical piece that you can actually hold, uh, and there's uh, it's just immense uh, gratification of that. George, you know? do you model your jewelry after any particular style, or is it something that just comes to you when you make it? Well, well, the way I started was um, uh, uh, my very first piece was what I call it's a, a scarab uh, uh, cuff in the uh, the King Tut. Uh, a tomb, uh, and, uh, uh, and also, of course, in the, the fantastic exhibition that have taken place uh, with the artifacts from from his tomb. Uh, uh, there is it's a, it's a gold cuff, it's gold, uh, and, and it's, a, it's a scarab. But the scarab is it's, it's a real insect. You see the eyes, the antenna, the legs, and you know you see all of that detail, and then beautiful sort of detail on on the sides. So that piece, I'll say, was my I guess inspiration mm. to make my own version of that kind of cuff bracelet, but mine is very uh, simple with very clean lines. And um, uh, but, but that was the uh, my inspiration was the the, the, uh, the beautiful gold cuff from from his tomb. Um, and so I I continued once I made that piece the scarab cuff. I continued to make other pieces with that scarab uh, motif, I'll say. And then, uh, so I have a number of pieces with that I call my scarab collection, but then I've gone on to um, other things, uh, other styles of, uh, of other uh, what um, collections. Um, and the, uh, one of the great things, too, and I guess this happens to everybody, uh, is that one thing, you find a, a, you, there's always one, there are many ways to use just one simple design. One little design can take you to a number of pieces, but then one thing leads to the next change of design and so on. So I now have about uh, 
six, I think, or seven different collections in in, in my uh, my, my line, I'll Wonderful. say. Um, yeah, so uh, one thing leads to another, and it, it never stops. It's, that's what's, that's the beauty of it. But, uh, and, and the great thing about it, too, is it's creative. You know, the, uh, in, in show business, in, in the theater and in film and everything, basically you're dealing with people who are, are uh, creative, whether the, the writers, the directors, the actors, everyone. And so it's a creative field, and and uh, and uh, this is true. Uh, and uh, if in, in uh, as an actor, uh, your 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 main uh, job is to hopefully you're working for an audience. You hope that an audience will will be pleased by whatever we all are doing. And it's the same with jewelry. I, I just I hope that someone will like what I make, you know, so uh, it still continues to be a, a, a artistic kind of venture to please uh, an audience, hopefully. Right. George Chakiris, our special guest here on the Ray Carr Show. George, I want to thank you on behalf of our listeners here in Cleveland, Ohio, for being a guest on the program, and I wish you the best of success in the future. Hey, thank you so much. It's been nice talking to you. Thank you. George, before you go, can you do a promo for the Ray Carr Show? By saying uh, the Ray Carr Show, sure. Yeah, just say your name, and you're listening to the Ray Carr Show in Cleveland, Ohio. And this is uh, okay. use your name. Uh, hi, this is George Shakiris, and you're listening to the Ray Carr Show in Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you so much, George. I wish you the best. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye.